In this video, we're going to take a look at transforming exponential and logarithmic functions. We'll start by looking at the different types of transformations that we can have. The first one, a vertical translation. For that to happen, we have f of x plus k. So that's a vertical translation. For a horizontal translation, we're going to have f of x minus h and we'll see how these fit together with our transformations in a little bit. A vertical stretch or compression, that's going to be a times f of x. Now how do we know if it's a stretch or a compression? Well, if a is larger than 1, it's going to be a stretch. If a is smaller than 1 but greater than 0, then it's going to be a compression. Horizontal stretch and compression, that might be the most confusing one, but it's not too bad. We have f of 1 over b times x. And again, same thing applies there. If the b is larger than 1, then it's going to be a stretch. If it's smaller than 1 but greater than 0, typically a fraction or a decimal, then it'll be a compression. Finally, when we talk about reflections, if we're reflecting across the x-axis, it's negative f of x. And if we're reflecting over the y-axis, it's f of negative x. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these in action. This first one at the top here, we might be asked to tell what transformations have been applied. Well, the parent function, first of all, will be important to identify. For this one, the parent function is f of x. Or excuse me, not it's f of x, it's 4x, 4 to the x power. So my parent function is f of x equals 4 to the x power. Okay, notice the difference here. To get from my parent function to this function, f of x, the x power part, has had 1 added to it. Well, hmm, interesting. I wonder what's happening there seems there's some sort of translation but is it horizontal or vertical well one way that we can take a look at this is to go ahead and graph it and then we can see is it moving horizontally or vertically so let's do that I'm gonna start by graphing the parent function so my parent function if I graph that that's 4 to the x power comes right on through like so then I'm going to add in, I'm going to graph 4 to the x plus 1 power. And let's see how that compares. Huh, interesting. The parent function has been moved over. It appears to be moved over 1. Huh, okay. Well, then let's look at this. It moved over 1 to the left. So a horizontal translation to the left well it was plus one and we move to the left one ah remember if it's a horizontal translation the general form is x minus h so when we have a plus in that situation it's actually moving to the left because we could look at it as x minus negative one that's how we get the plus right there, the x plus 1. So we're moving to the left one unit. Okay, all right, let's take a look at this next one. Well, this one, let's see. The negative is being applied to the base here. And again, I have the same parent function, 4 to the x power, and the negative sitting out front. Huh, it appears to be some sort of reflection and it appears that it's going to be over the x-axis because that negative is sitting out front there. If for it to be over the y-axis, the negative would have to be up on that x. So let me just show you how that would look. For it to reflect over the y-axis, we would have f of x equals 4 to the negative x power. Okay, so we'll take a look at both of those and, and see what those graphs look like. All right. Let's grab our, our graphing tool again here. We'll clear out that other graph. I have just have my parent function right there. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and graph the negative 4 to the x power. So we'll go ahead and graph that. And it should be flipping over the x-axis. Let's see. Well, hey, there it is. Flipped over the x-axis. Remember, our x-axis is our horizontal axis right there. Now, let me show you how it would change if we put that negative in with the x. So I'm going to change it. I put the negative now in with the x. It's 4 to the negative x power. And when I graph that, remember, that should flip over the y-axis. And sure enough, there it does. So we see how things change just based on where that negative is. All right. So then let's look at this last one. Okay. So we said this was this one's a flip over the x-axis. And then the one that we wrote here was over the y-axis. Just based on where that negative was. Okay, how about this one? We have the log of x plus 5. Hmm. Interesting. Well, the change, the parent function here is the log of x, and the change is coming inside the logarithm. We're taking the logarithm of that 5 being added to our x. As we look at these, <coughs> excuse me, as we look at our translations here, it's clearly a, a translation because we have that addition there. And, well, the plus 5 is inside the parentheses, so it appears that it's going to be a horizontal translation. And again, since it's plus 5 and our general form is minus h, I got a feeling that we're going to go 5 to the left. But let's check. Remember, if you have the graphing technology, you can always check by just go ahead and graphing it. So I'm going to start by graphing the parent function, which is the, the log of x. So let's go ahead and graph that. OK, there it is in yellow. Let me change the colors so maybe we can see it a little better. OK, there we are. Made it in pink. All right. Now, I'm going to graph the log of x plus 5. So let's add that in there and see what happens. Remember, we predicted that it's going to be moved 5 to the left. Hey, sure enough, there it is. It's moved over 5 to the left. So that translation for this one is to the left, 5. Okay, so we can figure out what the transformations are by graphing or by looking and comparing to what we know for our translations. All right, now let's take a look at what happens if we're asked to apply the different transformations to a function that we already have. Let's see. Switch over to this other screen here. We'll grab our transformations. All right, for this one, let's say that we want to take this function that we have and we're going to go ahead and we want to translate it and do a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. All right. Well, here's my vertical stretch and compression and it says a times f of x. Well, here's my f of x. So I'm going to multiply a, and I said a, a stretch by a factor of 2. So it's going to be 2 times f of x. All right. Well, here's my f of x right here. So I'm just going to replace f of x with that. So I have 2 times the log of x plus 1. Oops. Log of x plus 1. Just like so. What that does is it's going to be a vertical stretch by 2. Let's try a different one here. How about a horizontal translation of, let's go 3 to the right. 3 to the right. All right. And let's do it to our f of x that we have right here now. So I want to go 3 to the right. Well, first of all, what's a number that represents 3 to the right? Well, that would be positive 3. 
Remember that up and to the right are positive directions and left and down are negative directions. So three to the right, I'm going to use my horizontal translation here and we'll write this out. We have f of x and then three to the right will be minus three. Okay, so f of x minus three. And just to keep it from getting too messy, I'm actually going to go back to my original function here. And so remember, if we had something like this and we were asked for f of two, what would we do with that to figure out what f of two is? Well, we take two and replace x with two. Well, the same thing applies here. I'm taking f of x minus three. So I'm going to go ahead and replace each x with x minus three. That's all this means. So I go ahead and I'm going to call this g of x, that's our transformed function here, equals the log. Now remember, I'm going to replace my x with x minus three. So it's the log of x minus three plus one. Well, we can do a little simplification there. So it's going to be the log of x minus 3 plus 1 would be minus 2. So the log of x minus 2. Now, let's just check this out once. We have the log of x plus 1. That's our parent, or the uh, not really the parent, but it's the function that we started with and then we transformed. And then I transformed it to the log of x minus 2. I wanted it to go 3 to the right. Well, let's check and see if that's what really happened. So the log of x plus 1 and the log of x minus 2. Okay, so the log of x plus 1 and the log of x minus 2. I'm just getting those typed in here into my um, program, my graphing program. I'm going to start by graphing the log of x plus 1. So there it is in blue. Now I'm going to bring in the log of x minus 2. Remember, we said that we wanted to move it 3 to the right. So it should show up somewhere 3 to the right of that first one. Let's check it out and see what happens. Here it comes. Huh. Sure enough, there it is. So transformations with exponential and logarithmic functions. And these transformations apply to any types of functions. These that we see over here on the right. They'd apply to any types of functions. We just look specifically at exponential and logarithmic in this particular video. The vertical, hor horizontal, the vertical stretch and compression, all of those things, we just go ahead. First of all, if it's a translation, figure out the number that applies to that. Remember, up or to the right is a positive direction. Down or to the left is a negative direction. Then we'll put that number in for the k or the h if we're doing the translations. And then either I need to just replace my f of x with what I started with and then have the plus or minus something here. Or I'm going to substitute in whatever winds up in here. Like in this one, we had f of x minus 3. So we replaced x with x minus 3 in the same way that we would replace x with 2 if we were looking for f of 2. I hope this video is helpful. Keep working hard on your math, and I know you'll do great.